Hi everybody, it's Madge Weinstein here with the deliciously lovely fashion slurry. As usual, I'm oh trying to learn God. to pronounce her name. And we have a fantastic interview for you today. And I'll let fashion uh, do the honors. Yes, we have the very beautiful, stunning, and definitely uh, lip sync assassin. We have Miss Abby. Oh my God. Yay. Yes. I'm Hello. Snapping. Hi, darling. How are you? You're you're you are gorgeous. First of all, you are not only the trade of the season. You are the gorgeous lady of the season. How does it feel to be that oh, gorgeous? Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Well, I'm good. I'm good. It has been a crazy weekend because it it, it has been the finale of Drag Race Holland, but I'm I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah. So, how have the responses been to? Uh, well. Uh, it's not just the the finale, of course. You you probably have been uh, emailed and called and uh, DM'd on Insta like crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, it has been a roller coaster on social media, though. Uh, yeah. Because every week, uh, well, it's a new episode, so every week I got different comments online. So each week, like I got very positive vibes some weeks i got very negative vibes on uh comments on social media but overall they're all good they all love me and uh i am so proud uh, to be here well definitely you were the the taste maker of the uh group because uh yeah, maybe the yeah. dutch aren't <laughs> that emotional and maybe your brazilian side made, made some uh splash for uh the dutch audience well you really represented yeah that's for countries. sure that's for sure maybe i was a, a little bit too potty mouth for the dutch uh <laughs> i don't know about potty mouth, but <laughs> at least you don't uh shy away from emotions i loved you being potty mouth because yeah. that's the only thing i understand in dutch <laughs> it's the only thing i'm like oh yeah what did she say stink poop what was it poop could poop could whore. No, what was a it? Stink whore. Stink whore. Stink whore. But Jackie called you a stink whore. <laughs> That's the word of the season. She, <laughs> she said, don't call me a stink whore, and you said stink whore, or something like that. I can't remember. No, she that. could call her stink whore. You I could think, call right? me a stink whore. You said stink whore. Yeah, she, she well, uh, Jenny told me, if, if I am a stink whore, yeah. a stinky hole, you can say that to me. I said, so <laughs> why are a stinky hole? <laughs> <laughs> Did she stink? <laughs> well, she does not think, but she is a hoe. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, I guess that happens. You know what I mean? Sometimes girls get around, right? You get busy. <laughs> yeah, You're gorgeous. Yeah. What are you going to do? You're not going to waste that gorgeous body, right? You got to do something with it. That is but, true. But you're married, that is right? True. Are you? You're married or in a relationship? Uh, right? Well, I am in a relationship. We are um, engaged, but we're we're not mm -hmm. married yet. Okay. And you've been together about ten years, right? Yeah, yeah. We we are together ten years, and mm -hmm. uh, since one year we are engaged, mm -hmm. and now we plan to to do a wedding uh, this summer. But uh, Corona happened, and mm -hmm. also yeah. drag race happened. So we were like, okay, we're gonna. I think we we need to postpone it uh, for over two years or over one year. When yeah, and when uh, when I have less busy, <laughs> right? Because when you when you were did that lip sync, I can't remember which one it was where you dedicated it to your mother in law. Um, but fashion was explaining it to me because in Dutch, in English, if you say mother-in-law, that means you're married. But in your case, it just means it's the mother of your partner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is uh, that is true. I dedicated the lip sync to her because uh, she she got sick five years ago. Uh -huh. And I remember when she got sick, uh, she was listening to that song like every day, all day long. Um and I'm not even a fan of of uh, of Anouk, you yeah. know, because it's very rocky, very punk. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was she, she was listening to that song, "Girl, Girl," every day. Uh, so I kind of grew up with that. My drag character grew up with that song in their head. I never performed yeah. that song, but uh, when I saw that song, like uh, when they told us, "Oh well, uh, the next lip sync is Girl Anouk." 
in my head, I was like, okay, I hope I, I am not in the bottom. But <laughs> if I am in the bottom, I'm going to make my mother-in-law so proud, I think. And, and I'm sure you did, yeah. You did. Yeah, it was, uh, well, you, you went lip syncing. My God, you killed it every time. Yeah, you know, what Fred said last on the last episode, I really uh, understood what he was saying. Because basic, what you're really good at is you take your emotions and whatever's going on with you and you channel it directly into your performance. And that's, I think, why your performances are so excellent. And that's what RuPaul always tells people to do on, on the you know, on the shows that she hosts. She always says, you know, channel that energy into your performance. I think you're excellent at that. Is, is that Do you do that intentionally? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's what I always try to, w w with my performances and with my lip syncs, is to sell uh, an emotion. I mean, no matter what emotion is, I'm going to try to sell that to my public or uh, if it is uh, the judges on Drag Race or if it is a public or if it is uh, a thousand people, I will uh, perform the, the shit out of the song <laughs> and try to sell that emotion, what is in that song, to the public. Right. That's the most important for me. But that's easier said than done. Like, what is your technique? Oh, How do you do you meditate? How do you connect with that in the sh in the sh in the show? I'm sure a lot of queens would like to be able to do what you do, or is it just so second nature you don't have to think about it? Uh, well, I I, I don't know, but it it, it just go very naturally to me, <laughs> and um, uh, I always like to to listen to uh to my songs like uh like weeks weeks and and try to get inspirations online uh to see some live shows of the artists so i really like to do my research on that yeah and to see what kind of that feel or emotion the the artist is trying to sell you know and trying to 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 be in the place of the artist and uh i think that's kind of my 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 trick to to do my lip syncs really good. Yeah. To so, really do my research on the number. That's interesting. Yeah. I've I've done a lot of drag when I, I like to do opera in drag and that's what I do. Like I'll watch the actual singer who I'm lip syncing to many times on video and learn the words and I try to emulate a particular performance. Is that is that what you try to do? You try to like you almost Yeah, yeah, that, that. yeah that's, that's fantastic. For sure. That's for sure. Uh, I think you, you can compare it with that, that, that you're trying to, uh, to sell what the actual singer or what the actual song is all about. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can stand there and it, it, it can be a song about something sad and you can try to sell it as a happy person, but it's not going to sell, though. Right. No. So I think that's kind of the trick to do a really good lip sync, to really get in the emotion of the song, uh, the artist, but also in the public. Yeah, who are who are your favorite yeah. drag queen? Like as far as lip syncing goes, performance specifically. Do you have any favorites uh, from Drag Race? Like all the different drag races, not just Tom. Well, I have a lot of queens of Drag Race that are really inspired myself, uh -huh. and uh, I see a lot of myself in uh, Naomi Smalls' uh -huh. Aquaria because I really mm -hmm. like the freshness of drag that they have. Yeah, um, and also like that they every time like so. Uh, showing body and uh, yeah, I really love their their performances. They really put a lot of input in their performances, uh, and that's what I like. You know, I really like uh, shining on a stage. I thought you really reminded me of Shangela in terms of your energy because I was just watching a documentary of her. There's this excellent documentary. I don't know if you've both seen it on HBO, where uh, Eureka, um, Shangela, and Bob the Drag Queen, go to these different small towns in America, and it's so well oh. done. But Shangela, when yeah, she Yeah, I saw it. I saw it, and it's so well I done. Just, I really like the energy that, and the Shangela gives, really. Yeah, I mean, when she performs, she is absolutely electric. And I, and I think that's that's that reminds me of you, in a way. Um, so what about, so you thank you. Thank you. Oh, we, we just, we think you're great. What about, um, now I know you're married. I don't know if you're exclusive, but would you and your, uh, fiance be willing to have a thruple with Frank from the, uh, I know you really <laughs> liked Frank. 
I did too, and I'm a lesbian, okay? But Frank, Frank is hot. And when he had those gold panties on, I just about, my basement was so flooded, it caused this whole, uh, you know, area to flood in my, in Florida. Would you consider that three-way with Frank? Yeah, yeah, we, we love it. Oh my God. That's good. It's good to be open-minded. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're really open-minded. We're really open-minded relationship. I mean, we are pretty long together, so that we really uh, that we're really open to each other. So you're, you're yeah, you're I think together that's the ten key years that we are so long with each other. So you're together ten years. So you were you started when you were what fourteen together? It seemed like uh, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, fourteen, fifteen. Wow. <sighs> and when? Did, well, I, I was eighteen, so I, when I've you. Been, you were 18 when you uh, met Dux Lodi? Yes, oh, and we've right. been together a million years. <laughs> I thought maybe you had an affair with Frank and you didn't tell me. No. So, what's your story where you went from, I know you were born in Brazil, and then you, at some point, yes. lived in, in Spain? What, can you give us a timeline? Like, when did you move where? Um, I was eight when I moved to Spain. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Brazil to Spain, and I lived uh, from eight years to till I was fourteen, and then at my fourteen, we moved to the Netherlands, and since then I am here in the Netherlands. So that's many culture shocks because probably Brazil, Spain yes. is quite different, and I, I know Spain, Holland is <laughs> really different too. Right. Yeah, but also Brazil and Spain. There, there is a, there's yeah. a lot of difference in there. Yeah. Uh, well, the the good part is is that I had so many cultures. Uh, I saw so many cultures uh, growing up, you know, and yeah. that's what I also get my inspirations from from the a lot of powerful women uh, from from all the cultures that I have seen. And that really inspired me on, on my drag, uh, all the cultures and all the languages and all the pretty stunning women that I have saw in those countries. So where, where in Spain were you? Uh, I was in Granada, in Andalusia, okay. but I also oh. live in Barcelona. <gasps> nice. I love Barcelona. So, so what, beautiful what, places. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, what, um, you said you were, you let your dragons uh, get inspired by all the cultures you've seen. So what's typically something you took from the Brazilian culture and something from the Spanish and something from the Dutch? If you know from the top of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that from Brazilian, uh, I think I got a lot of that uh, sexiness and maybe mm-hmm. showing body and being... Mm-hmm. being proud and comfort on your own body uh, no matter how it's it's looking and i think what i got from my pain uh i i got a lot of inspiration uh of the spanish woman how feisty that they are (laughs) and yeah because they're really feisty they're really feisty uh so yeah, I got a lot of my inspiration of the feistiness and that fierceness that Spanish women have, and I think I have the the. I, I got really to know the the business side of drag when when I, I was here in the Netherlands. That I saw, oh wow, this is it's really a career. I can really mm-hmm. uh, make myself a business woman. So that's what I got from the Dutch, uh, from the Dutch culture. Yeah, to be a businesswoman. So you're fluent in Spanish, and that makes Abby. All all those cultures make Abby. Okay. Yeah, and and we see it in your drag. Now, are, do you? Sp- so you're fluent in Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch, right? So three languages, and English. Oh, and yeah. English, sure. <laughs> and English. Any more? And Catalan. <laughs> and Catalan, oh. excellent. Yeah, my in, my mother in law lives in uh, Barcelona. Actually, it's a very nice place. So yeah, it's a lovely place. It's a dream place, Barcelona. 
And when you moved, was it all because your mother moved, your family moved, or what? Why did you move there to Spain? I'm just curious. Yeah, it was because of my mother. Yeah, she was looking uh, for a job, and then she got a job there, and uh, so we moved. <laughs> and when did you come out? I did come out when I came. I came to the Netherlands. Okay. Uh, so I think I was fifteen, sixteen, uh-huh. maybe. Yeah. And that's when you met your uh, fiance. Yeah, that's and, when I met him, and uh, I came out. Yeah, in Amsterdam. Yeah. And, and so, is that when you had the issue? Because I know you had problems with, uh, or you alluded to a lot of issues with. Was it family that rejected you at first because you were gay, or how did that go down? Um. Well, at that time, they, they they didn't like it. Yeah, they didn't like my came my, my coming out. Uh, but yeah, at this point now, they really they they are trying to support me and they are trying to to see uh, the art of drag and uh, so they're really trying to support me now. They're really changing now. And, so and, and good. Did, didn't they understand, uh, or, or was it? a fear of what was ahead of you or was it a fear of how they think it happened uh, sort of kind of do, yeah. do you know what I, I'm I think it was it? a mix of everything though i think they were afraid of what, what what was coming to me and also what the world would do to me uh but also what uh of the idea of gay was and uh, being a drag queen was Mm-hmm. Uh, they have this certain idea, um, and and they didn't want me to be part of that. Yeah, but I did. Yeah, and you're wonderful. You're well. I'm I'm sure they're uh, thinking differently now with uh, you. Definitely with you being on uh, uh, Drag Race Holland, of course. But before that, you already uh, had amazing performances. But your yeah your, yeah for sure. Your brother always accepted you, right? It was the it was your parents, or yeah yeah he yeah. always yeah yeah he, he always have been super supportive since the moment that I came out. He was the only one uh, in my family who who supported me and who always was was like fighting with the family to just uh, for me to just be accepted. Oh, wow. and, so uh, your advocate. Yeah, it's good to yeah, have an ally yeah. in your family. Then, if 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 it's so hard. It it's it it probably helps him being, uh, I'm guessing not gay, and uh, being the middle ground between the two worlds, kind of. Yes, yes, it, it, it's so fine to to have someone who's a, an ally uh, on the family uh, who really gets me, uh, gets the point, what I I think and uh, do or act and. Uh, yeah, he, he always have been so supportive of me that uh, that it's it, it was it was kind of strange for the family. They they expected him to be this kind of homophobic that he, that he's not. Mm. Uh, so it's really nice to see that. It's really nice, uh, and I'm so proud to be his brother. Yeah, and and it showed in the We Are Family uh, uh, episode of uh, Holland's Drag Race. So you two you, were yeah. so amazing together. So when you do that, when, oh, you know in adva- you. when you know in advance that they they're going to do that family episode. So do you do you tell them at that point who you're who you want to bring, or do they surprise you, or how does that work? Uh, well, they they asked me to give two people uh, for that episode. Mm-hmm. So actually, I gave my boyfriend oh. and my brother. Okay. But of course, uh, I, I started doing drag with my boyfriend, and uh, he loves drag. He ha- he knows how to walk in heels, so mm-hmm. he was kind of like an easy choice mm-hmm. to bring him. Uh, so I was already in my head, okay, I think they're going to make it harder on me. Right. They're going to ask my little brother, because he doesn't know how to walk in heels. <laughs> he, he doesn't know drag. <laughs> yeah. So it was really nice that they brought my brother. 
Oh, that's nice. So you and your you and your boyfriend both do drag. So are you like I know like room and faith intervention or like almost like a power drag couple? Or is he like a performing drag or he's just sort of he likes to dress up once? In a oh while? no no no. She she's my, my boyfriend does not drag. My boyfriend just try it for once and uh, oh, once okay. in Halloween he likes to dress up, but he, he's not a drag queen. He, he's not doing it like me. <laughs> oh, I see. So. Um, I was curious too about your carnival. I know you were inspired a lot by Rio and carnival. Have you ever actually been in a carnival in Rio or is that something you'd want to do? Uh, I still want to do that because I didn't have the time yet to be on the carnival there. Yeah. Uh, so I think you can expect the next carnival, Abby in Brazil. Oh, that would be amazing. That if You've got to have your own float. Everything is okay. Oh, around. definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll so, be a superstar there. That would be amazing. A huge costume with lots of... Maybe Frank mm -hmm. can come. Can you get Frank? Lots Frunk? of feathers and lots of <laughs> Frunk, rancho. Yeah. I would love. <laughs> but and, Rotterdam yeah. as the summer carnival, did, ever participated in that? No, not yet, but I have been in the Brabantse carnival. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then the regular carnival, probably the Dutch carnival, or a real the Dutch carnival, carnival. The Dutch, which is very different. It's, it's yeah. very different. It's very different. No, but the in Rotterdam you have a, a more like real kind of carnival in summer, where you have the floats with the the beautiful, stunning boys and girls dressed up. Well, not dressed up actually, almost naked. But yeah, I don't know if it's still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Famous, but yeah. Well, so you have done maybe, that. Maybe have... that's an option for me. Sounds yeah, great. Before there's time to go to uh, Rio, you have uh, you can you can go to uh, oh, no. <laughs> Are they? Aren't they <laughs> at the same like... time? Or no? I don't know. No. Uh, it, when is Carnival in Rio? Yeah, uh, I think in, in February. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, the the it's summer carnival in Rotterdam, so I, it's either. July or August, but I'm not sure because it's been a hundred years ago when I went. I don't know if it's still called yeah. Summer Carnival even, but anyway. Yeah, that would be amazing. You must have a lot of fans in Brazil. How how have they been supporting you, the Brazilian fans? Because you're the first, not just in Netherlands, but you're the first Brazilian queen on Drag Race, period, right? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I, I've had a lot of uh, a lot of support from brazil yeah really like i couldn't imagine that this is going to be so big in brazil well we certainly learned from valentina that latino drag queens their <laughs> support is fierce but i didn't understand yes. like how come they don't do uh they didn't do a miscongeniality in in uh, drag race holland do you have any idea why um I don't have any idea. Maybe that still has to come. Uh, oh. Or did they do that in Britain? I don't remember. I, I, I can remember. But who, who will you guys give the Miss Congeniality title? I would, honestly, I would probably say, well, that's a, that's a hard question because I think like sometimes you have to give it to the person with the most social media following which i imagine would be you right because yeah. you must have a lot of fans that yeah. are because that's like valentina like you when you when oh, the fans are yeah, going that's crazy fan favorite one yeah. that's uh, that's fan favorite one that's not miss congeniality oh really <laughs> well i would say I, for, for miss congeniality I, I don't know i guess i would, I would say mama. Oop, mama yeah isn't congeniality the one that helps the other queens the most yeah. and also, judging from the episodes, everybody loved Mama, and all the the the, the queens we have already spoken, all were uh, so positive about Mama and how she helps everybody out and is sweet. And I yeah. think for me, it's Mama, yeah. I guess. But what? But I think a yeah, better question for me is too. if I had to vote, I will okay. vote on her. I will put my money on Mama. Yeah. That's good to know. I would say Setter Jean, but she kind of had some fights with people, particularly you, right? She was very <laughs> mad when you flicked yep. fingers at her. What was that about the flicking the fingers? Because it was hard for me to understand what went on there, and I don't know if it was the editing, but she, you were very upset with her. She was very upset with you, and I don't... Were they just making drama? Because I don't really see what the big deal is. Like, you're just flicking your fingers. What, what happened? 
Did I miss something that wasn't? On yeah, camera? I, I, I think I think that was just that that was just uh, trying to start some drama, mm. and of course the 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 feistiness in me, uh, yeah, we, we picked it up. I mean, I would not be sitting there and um, let something happen. Of course, I would speak my mind and uh, say something. <laughs> and you, I think that was that was kind of my 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 fault in it. Yeah, but when you made that Maybe gesture, be, when you made that gesture, what were yeah. what was your intention? What what were you really doing? Were you just saying move over, or were you really being bitchy, or what 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 was it? Uh, I think at that moment, I was only uh, that the girls could help me because I couldn't stand on my own two feet. I was uh-huh. so nervous. Yeah, and I think you see in the shot later that that the girls are like, having me a hand. Uh, to walk over the stage uh-huh. and to get on the back, but it was nothing more than that. And she <laughs> trying to make uh, like a, this big thingy and to make something uh, really ugly out of it, which it was not. It was yeah. totally not the case. And um, of course, I, I reacted to that and. I reacted to that very angry because I was like, okay, I'm not going to let this happen because it was not the case. Yeah. Also, I think it de- definitely has to do with cultures as well. Uh, I've uh, been all over the world and uh, met so many people and sometimes uh, communicating, uh, there, there's just something lost in translation somehow because of cultures. And, uh, I guess the Dutch are always known to be very blunt and uh, whatever, uh, but we don't see it that yeah. way. We're just like, we're honest. We, we don't uh, fuck around and just tell you what we think. And uh, for others, it's like, uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? So, I don't know. What did I say? I think it was... Yeah, well, I, what did I, well, call I totally me? get you. Because- sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, man, you live well, in I Holland. Totally get you know, because the, the Dutch yeah. people can be sometimes a little bit too uh, direct sometimes. Yeah. And uh, but that was not the case on on Drag Race. Though they, they people were really direct, and well, at least me, I was really direct with with everyone, and I was really honest with everyone, and every emotion or every see everything that you see on Drag Race that was really honest, and that was my honest. Uh, yeah, my, my honest action or uh, emotion to yeah. it that yeah. was going yeah. on. So yeah. what? Which you know, for me, the big question of the season is what happened with you and Envy? Or did you did you patch things up? Are you too cool? Uh, now now we are totally cool. Oh, I mean, uh, in that moment, in that moment, of course, that was horrible because yeah. uh, one of your sisters from your own house say your name which it it, it was kind of like uh, a thingy back then yeah. uh, but we talked it out and uh, I see now because now I see everything back on TV I see now that okay I was the worst <laughs> so she was right uh, well I see your point so my, yeah, I, I, my wife is Peruvian you, you get me now? So you get me now? now I totally see why she said my name yeah. Uh, but I still think that uh, when you are in a house together, you shouldn't say the name of each other. Well, I think you've got everybody on the edge of the seat when uh, the second time came around that everybody had to name a name. That and is. everybody was thinking, oh, Envy's not going to do this twice. And there it <laughs> was. Did. You know, my wife, I've mentioned this 5,000 times on this show, but my wife is Peruvian. And when she so when we watched that, the first time she she mentioned you, my wife said, "Oh no, Peruvians don't do that. You don't do that to your best friend. <laughs> you don't do that. You know." And I, and I kind of agree. Like, okay, so if you're the worst, you could you don't have to tell everybody everything. I mean, okay, that's Dutch, I guess, but you know, she's also um, I don't know. I, I see where you're. Yeah, yeah, but maybe maybe we're, we're, that, that's a different that's right. a different type of thinking uh that we have and some people just think about uh what what's good for that moment and what feels right and that felt right for the sure. for envy in that moment to, to just say my name to right because well, everyone good. else did. 
So, so and it ain't RuPaul's best friend, Brace. Right. And you know what? The, the, yeah. important, the important thing is you're still friends and uh, you get over it and it's just a TV show, which uh, that's good. Yes. Yes, yes, for sure. Sure. What was your favorite um, challenge or uh, yeah, maxi challenge or mini challenge? Uh, I think the one with my brother, that was really a oh, gift yeah. to me. That was really the best. Yeah. yeah and of course, the first very challenge. Moving. I Especially that, seeing family yeah, again. That was an excellent yeah, episode yeah. when everybody brought their family. Your your aesthetic seems to be, you know, they always talk about Mama Queen as sort of, uh, I, was, I guess, non-binary and Chelsea Boy. But I I see a lot of that in you, too, because you don't try to hide your male physique, really, in your in your um, outfits, right? I mean, certainly in like in the one where you were with your brother, you you really show your male physique and at the same time female. In in some ways, you remind me of a female bodybuilder. Is Is that intentional to sort of be a little bit... I can't think of the word not ambiguous, but yeah, sort of like non. Yeah, you know. yeah, I get you what I mean. I love, I love the uh, non-binary. Uh, I love, I love non-binary people, and I always have uh, like this struggle with myself. Like, am I too manly? Am I too girly? And uh, I got to a point now that I'm, I'm doing drag, and I'm trying to combine both uh, to be like a man and a woman all in in once and i really love for that i really love uh the non-binary look <laughs> well well you're stunning with and without drag so uh, yeah so, and i yeah. I, I, I i'm not i'm not a fan of labels either so whatever right it makes you feel good right and whatever the fans like, which they love you. So going back to Envy for a second, I was curious because we had Patty Pom Pom. She watched the finale with us and she sort of implied, and uh, I don't want to take words, put words <laughs> in her mouth, but she kind of implied that she thought maybe the producers helped Envy a bit in terms of how she produced herself. And like, for example, in that last lip sync number, The Born This Way, she, what Patty said is Envy's very talented, but not the best performer of all the drag queens and but the way she moved and the way she worked for the camera implied that she might have had some help from the producers that maybe other people didn't have how where do you where do you see that is that just any anything oh uh, well i have to agree with daddy pam um yeah i have to agree with daddy pam pam because she already knew the production. She already knew everyone uh, from there. So, oh wow! Uh, so it's it, it, maybe she didn't. Maybe she was. She knew also what we knew, but uh, because she knew everyone, because uh, she already worked with them, felt like, oh, okay, uh, maybe she she's getting help, or maybe she's not, but she's doing really well. Mm. Maybe she well, maybe not really necessarily well, getting but help, but maybe because she has worked with those people, she know knows what they want. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's the case. Interesting. Yeah. I can see that. So, did you when you saw Envy? Because some other people said when they saw Envy in that room, they said, "Oh, Envy's going to win right away." Did, was it yeah. sort of a foregone conclusion for the for every for everybody in the cast that Envy was going to win? Kinda, but also kinda <laughs> not because yeah, yeah. We also kinda not because everyone else were were on the top of the game. I mean, uh, exactly. I have to say, Jenny DK. Jenny DK was also really, really good. Uh, so if they gave the title to her, I think we will we, we will be okay with it too. So it was. Well, with any of the queens, but, I think because I think you all were really, really good. You had all you had. You all had your own kind of niche or something but uh, individually you were all amazing like you were the, oh, the, lip -sync, you. the lip sync queen and the body uh, whatever goddess and uh, yeah Envy had, uh, definitely has her uh, uh, makeup uh, under control um, 
mama uh, is so inspirational and whatever so i think all the queens this was such a good cast that it was really really hard to pick anyone yeah for me anyway yeah because everyone had had such a such a uh, their own thing you know and mm -hmm. everyone had something special in them and that made this cast so but so good it was so mm -hmm. good to do this with them and uh yeah it, it, it was really like an unbelievable unbelievable experience yeah for a minute there i really thought i thought maybe they'll let you go through t further i I was, um, because you did so well in the finale, I thought, wow, she really has a chance here. But then mm -hmm. when Fred sent you home, I thought it was so interesting because I looked at the the, the Dry Waste wiki on, online. And, when it, you know, it says who sent you home for everyone. And it always normally says the name of the person who you lip sync against. In your case, it said sent home by Fred Van Leer. And that, <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? I mean, that means no queen yeah. sent you home. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, actually, nobody sent me home. Fred right. Mayer sent me home. So I, that's quite so, an yeah, honor. So I did. I didn't sashay away. Actually, right? Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> no. Nope. Wow! So that, what a revelation on the show. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm curious too. I always curious about the when how the production works. When did you find out you were going to be on Drag Race? When did they call you? Uh, they called me in the beginning of the summer here in the Netherlands. Of the I think summer. I oh, was wow. in July, maybe, or... So very, right before oh, you started. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like almost when we started. I think, uh, when I, when I had the call, uh, that I was going to be on track race, uh, I had only one of two months, no, two months to get all my stuff ready and to get all the runways ready. And it was also like quarantine here. Oh, so yeah. Everyone was in lockdown. All the designers mm -hmm. were, were in lockdown. Um, so we had to do everything in two months wow. uh, before we started. Wow. So, so, so it was kind of hurry so to get everything right on time and how did you apply like did, was there a, a, a casting call or how did you know to apply for this because i know like some people like patty they've they've known about this for a couple of years did, did they make a call or did they just call you and say we want you on drag race we heard about you well uh like patty said like i already had uh, uh heard from from them uh a couple of years ago Mm. Uh, but he didn't have the license ready, and uh, so it, it was all problems with it. And then this year they were like, "Okay, we got the license ready, uh, but we are in a lockdown." <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was really, really fucked up because uh, we had to do like all the audition tapes all over again. Uh, we had to do the testing all over again. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 we, we needed to do the, all the casting all over again. And uh, so, were there hard. a lot of queens that didn't it make it then? In lockdown. What? So, were there a lot of Dutch queens that didn't make it then? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think there were a lot of uh, Dutch girls who didn't make it through the cast. So you audi so you had to audition. Did you do? Did you just do a video like they do? Yeah, I did have yeah. to audition like everyone else. I yeah. did have, I did have to audition. Very nice. Well, we don't want to take too much of your time. You've been great to to come on our little podcast. But I I wanted to know like what's your future? What are you planning on focusing on? Performance, live performance, web. But what where where do you see your career going? You're obviously very young. You've got your whole future ahead of you. What are you going to do next? And where do you want people to follow you? Uh, well, everyone can follow me on Instagram, on Miss Abby, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And I think what the future holds me is more online drag and, uh, to perform more because so you I kind of found probably? out that, that, that I am a really good performer, apparently. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm going to focus more on performances 
maybe some online drag. And um, actually, I want to try to start maybe to, to get into the model world. Oh. So you will see a modeling in a couple of years. I mean, I hope for that. Well, I uh, hope. Models do have to so, yeah, short so length, I hope that the, the future and I'm guessing... brings me <laughs> the fashion together. Well, I hope you get on, I hope when they bring it back after COVID uh, and the work, the world tour comes back, you've got to be in, oh, uh, you've got to be in work, the world. Yeah. So yes. Good. I would love to do a world tour. I, I mean, I would, I dream about that. Yes. I Is it, do they, did they say anything about that on who would be on there or is there just nothing because of COVID in place yet? There, there's just nothing because of COVID. Oh. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> that sucks. I love that. Well, you've been yeah. great, uh, Abby. Congratulations. You were uh, fantastic on that show. You really represented yes. uh, Brazil. You represented Holland. And um, you made everyone proud. And you also show um, how you can overcome adversity in your personal yes. life by bringing it yeah. into your performance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. It has been a pleasure to be here in the podcast with you guys and to spill some tea and oh, yeah. uh, explain <laughs> how was my drag race experience because I have to say it was an unbelievable and a magical experience and I will really uh, do this all over again. I really will do it because it's, it's a magical experience. Right, and good luck well, with your thruple with Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Make videos. All, only fans. <laughs> thank you miss abby so oh my much. god you were amazing you You're are amazing welcome, darling. And, and we well we're already following you on yes. whatever we can follow you so we we'll keep an eye on you we and uh you i support. wish you and i'm gonna keep an eye back <laughs> <laughs> nice uh so i wish you all the best for whatever the future may hold for you Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And hopefully we will talk soon again. Yes. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye, bye, darling. <laughs> bye. <Bye-bye. laughs>